the authority of revelation and what i mean by authority revelation holy book that holds religious teachings or whatever like that is basically whatever agnostic teaching like i.e let's put christians for example a christian's authority and revelation is the bible right but so when someone's preaching or if a preacher is preaching it has to go in line or go with the bible the bible backs up what a preacher is preaching that's how you know it is the word of god or what someone's preaching is inspired by the holy spirit and etc so check this out okay no written authority gnosticism was spread by word of mouth think like the game telephone Religion based off of experience, not writing authority or doctrine, however, has to rely on twisting the Bible and scriptures in order to survive. It is a parasitic religion. It has to rely on Christianity and the teachings of Christianity because there is no writing things in Gnosticism. The only writings that you'll see later, which is right here, the Gnostic Gospels and Nag Hammadi. Now, what are they? You're going to hear Gnostics bring this up a lot. They'll say the Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary, Gospel of Judas, blah, 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 and et cetera. They'll come up with all types of stuff. Now, this is why you have to know that that information, they'll even say these books, these Gnostic Gospels were already in the Bible or they were a part of the Bible, but then they were removed um, by the Catholic church or by, you know, the early church or whatever, because they didn't like the Gnostics. They wanted to suppress the Gnostics. Okay. Check this out. All right. The Gnostic gospels and Nakamadi are second to fourth century forgeries, not inspired scripture. They carry no historical backing whatsoever which if you understand the Bible, the Bible has historical backing, spiritual backing. It's proven accuracy. These gospels, the Gnostic gospels, the Nag Hammadi have no historical backing. It was written almost 200 years after the New Testament period and conflict with it. So the New Testament was already written when these were written. They were known during the time of writing and were in, were rejected. So the Nag Hammadi and Gnostic Gospels were rejected. People knew that they were forgeries, that they were made up fairy tales. Okay, scholars agree writings were not produced by the famous Christians to whom the titles attribute the works to. Okay, so make sure that you understand that. Okay, so here's. Some proof. Gnosticism is a powerful link between the elaborate philosophical system of Asia and the mysticism of Syria and Egypt. As such, it offers a vast amount of material to students of comparative religion and esoteric philosophy. It also supplies many missing elements of the Christian story. No, it doesn't. And it implies the existence of a well-formulated esoteric tradition under the surface of early Christian theology. In other words, this thing took from this religion, that religion, twisted it, and basically came up with their own thing and then added on to other um, religions. And that's why this is a parasite. And it's also like kind of like a symbiote. It tries to take over... Um, and turn whatever religion Gnostic, okay? Um, now, they had no interest in ecclesiastical system, for they realized that no man can be saved by addicting himself to a theology. This is why they don't have just one theology. Everything is based off of experience, what you experience, okay? Well, I experienced in the spirit realm, I talked to my spirit guide, or I talked to this deity, and this deity told me this, and this deity showed this. Like, this is why they don't have a set theology. They make it up as they go, all right? The value lay in the soul experience. If Christianity could bestow a new dimension upon the internal conviction of realities, 
then Christianity was important. This importance deserved the respect and admiration of all thoughtful and sincere men. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if Christianity would have just joined in and said, yeah, we're just an extension of another religion like Hinduism or Buddhism or whatever, now Christianity is important because it's adding on to the story. Christianity wasn't about that. Or early Christians who were called followers of the way, they were not about that. They were about um, bringing a whole new thing. And that's why the Gnostics don't really particularly like Christianity. And this is why you'll see a lot of people, their arguments for Christianity, they'll say, oh, well, Christianity is just Zoroastrianism or Christianity is just this religion um, or it's the retelling of Horus and Osiris or whatever. You see what I mean? Because it's all about, well... If you will just say Christianity is just an extension or just part of the whole, then it will be okay. But no, Christianity is not that. All right. As is us usual with philosophical groups, the Gnostics were individualists and opposed to any intense program of organization, meaning no church, no um hierarchy none of that it's literally like you're on your own whatever you find out that's what it is kind of like the buddha it actually exactly like the buddha whatever you find out that's your reality that's that's what it whatever you learn by gnosis by knowledge by spiritual knowledge or spiritual teaching um that's how that works okay the sect consisted of numerous small groups, each dominated by one or more intellectuals with strong personal convictions, i.e. cults. Gnosticism was many schools enclosed within a loose program of integration with few restrictions upon the convictions and tastes of the members. Circles of Gnostic thought sprang up in most of the countries bordering upon the Mediterranean. Each of these circles contributed original ideas to the larger pattern of Gnostic thought. You see that? Every religion, everything that they were taking of was about putting it all together into this one thing. 